Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be doing a kitchen clean and declutter with me. I'm super excited because this is the very first video in my clean and decluttering series. I've been telling you guys for a few weeks now that we are going throughout my entire house and just decluttering everything. I really want to go much more minimal with all the things that I have. I'm tired of spending so much time cleaning and organizing all the things that we have and I want to own my time. I don't feel like all of these extra things that we don't need anymore or we don't use anymore are worth our time. I wanna spend that time doing something else. So this has been something that's been on my mind for several months and I'm excited to get going with it today. And I'm really excited that you guys are coming along this journey with me. So I'm sure that you guys are familiar with Marie Kondo who started the KonMari method. I am very familiar with her method. I've been familiar with it for several years now, but now that she has that show on Netflix, I know everyone is loving it. So I figured I would go through our kitchen and do the Marie Kondo method or the KonMari method. And then I'm also going to be kind of adjusting it and altering it slightly and doing some of my own methods that I do that I feel work a little bit better for me. So hopefully you guys can kind of learn from both methods and see which parts will work best for you and go ahead and tackle your own space. I also am going to be breaking this video into two separate videos, so like a part one and a part two. I asked you guys if you would rather see one really long video of me cleaning, decluttering, and organizing my kitchen, or if you'd rather have me break it into two slightly shorter videos. And most of you seem like you guys would rather see two shorter videos, so I think that's what I'm gonna do today. So part one, which is today, will be cleaning out my cabinets and everything, decluttering, just wiping everything down, getting it a nice start. And then next time for part two, I will be going in and actually taking all the items that we have left that I didn't get rid of. I will be organizing them, putting new systems in place, and just making the items that I have left much more usable and much more easier to get to. So I'm excited for this two-part video. Be sure that you are subscribed if you are not already so that you don't miss out on that video. YouTube is being kind of crazy lately and not really notifying people, so definitely hit that notification bell so that you have a pretty good chance of seeing my videos when they pop up and then also be sure to follow me over on Facebook and Instagram because I do share my videos when I do post them over there as well so that way you are definitely going to be notified anytime I put up a new video and the last thing I wanted to say before we get into this is as I said I am going to be going throughout my entire house and getting everything decluttered there's nothing that's off limits we are going through closets the boys room the playroom the living room, the office, like everything, bathrooms, you name it, I'm gonna go through it. So let me know in the comments what you wanna see next because whatever gets the most requests, I will be decluttering in the next videos. So be sure to leave me that comment. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what's inside all of these cabinets. I feel like we just have so much stuff and we just have not decluttered. We definitely do not need all of this and we don't use all of this, so it's just taking up space. Sorry for that lighting. And it is time for a lot of this stuff to go. So this has been a long time coming. I've wanted to do this for months and I've been waiting to share this experience and this journey with you guys. So I hope that this gives you the motivation that you need to go ahead and tackle your space. Let me know in the comments what areas of your house you are planning to declutter or if you have already decluttered a little bit this year, let me know if you've found a difference or if you've just felt a difference after getting those areas done. I know for me, after I got the kitchen done, it just felt like a whole new space and I feel so much more peace when I'm in there. So I am so looking forward to going throughout the rest of the house. And if you guys are finding motivation and inspiration for my videos, please go ahead and share these on your social medias or share them with a friend. I would so appreciate that. And if you do share on social media, be sure to tag me so that I can go ahead and share you back and just say thank you to you because I really do appreciate you sharing and I am just so thankful for this community that we have created together. So the first thing that I am doing is I am just actually going to be going cabinet by cabinet and drawer by drawer. I know the Marie Kondo method, it says to go ahead and just pull everything out and get everything into a pile, but to me that just feels so overwhelming to see everything I have. I do understand the whole point of it because then you're really seeing everything that you have, but it just feels much more stressful to me and gives me more anxiety. So to be a little bit more calm in the situation, I will just take out everything from one cabinet and then I will go through that cabinet and put those things away. And that's just something that works for me. Let me know if you guys declutter this way, kind of space by space, or if you just go ahead and pull everything out of the room and declutter all at once. The first space that I'm decluttering is our plates and bowls cabinet. 
We had a lot of extra plates and bowls in here that we just didn't need. I recently gotten some matching Corel dishes, so we didn't need all of the extras anymore and I felt like they were just taking up so much space and it was just not calming to me whenever we would open up this cabinet. So I wanted to really simplify things and only keep things that I knew we would use on a regular daily basis. Next, I'm moving into all of our glasses, and we had a ton of glasses in here. We do use mason jars, which keeps it pretty simple, and then we do have some mugs as well, but over time, we've just accumulated a lot of extra ones, and we don't need this. We only have five people in our family, and even when we have family and friends staying with us, we never will ever use all of these. So I wanted to only keep the things that we really enjoyed or that weren't broken in good shape. So that is one of the Marie Kondo techniques that I really have embraced and it's made it a lot easier for me to go ahead and get rid of things. So what I'm doing is while I am going through everything, I will touch every single thing and I will see if it brings me joy, if it sparks any joy in me. And if it really doesn't bring me any joy, then I will go ahead and get rid of it. And I just feel peace with that because anything that I have, I want to be intentional about the things that I'm keeping. And one one thing that I have talked about in my videos before and also over on Instagram is that everything that you have in your home is going to cost you something. And I'm not talking about money because you already spent that money when you brought it into your house. But once you buy an item, it's going to cost you more than just that. It's going to cost you your time to organize it and to clean it. And it's going to cost you space in your house as well. So that is one thing that I really had in mind as well as just thinking about if something sparked joy in me and made me happy to have it is, is this item going to benefit me enough to make it worth my time and worth my energy to clean and organize it? And also, is it worth the space that it takes up in my house? So I'm going to say that one more time and I just want you to think about it. It really makes a difference whenever you're decluttering. So whenever you are decluttering, think again to yourself, is this item worth the time that it's going to take me to clean and the effort that it's going to take me to organize it? And also, is it worth the space that it takes up in my house? Those things are really worth something and it's not just a monetary thing that's going to cost you money once, but it will continue to cost you. So you need to decide if those items are really, really worth it. Another thing that a lot of people have a hard time with when they are decluttering is feeling like they need to get their money's worth out of this item or feeling like they shouldn't get rid of it because they spent so much money on it. But that's another thing to really think about and just kind of let go of that idea that you already spent money on it because that's the thing is you did already spend the money. The money is gone. So you need to just let that part go and have peace with it because as I said earlier, it is costing you something other than money now and the money isn't going to come back. So you need to just let go of that part and have peace with it and just decide if it's going to benefit your life anymore or if it's better off out of your house.
got me saying, hey, girl, will you marry me? Two kids in a house and live happily. I think we are so meant to be. The next cabinet I started working on, it holds some different dishes that we use whenever we have company over. It has a million of my cookbooks that I pretty much never pull out. And it has like some herbal teas and some items that we put into our smoothies. But it just hasn't been organized well and I feel like it's just very cluttered in there. So I was very excited to tackle this one and just kind of minimize everything that we had. I know that a lot of things in there we do actually use but a lot of things we really didn't anymore, so I needed to reevaluate all those items. And as soon as I get all the items taken out of any cabinet or drawer, I am just going through with my Dyson vacuum. I've taken off the long handle of it, and I am just using it as a handheld vacuum with a little attachment, and I'm just vacuuming out all of our cabinets and drawers with this. And then I go in with my Caldre Sea Salt and Neroli Spray and my microfiber towel, and I just give it a good wipe down. But that is one tip that I would recommend. I would use your attachment to your vacuum and just suck out any extra little bits and pieces. It will make cleanup a lot easier afterwards because you're not just going to be wiping those crumbs onto the floor. You're just sucking them up with a vacuum and then you can go ahead and just wipe down any spills or anything extra left on your cabinets with your rag. So as I'm putting everything back in the cabinet, I know that this is not how I'm going to want to organize it. So I will be sharing that in next week's video. So be sure you are subscribed for that. But for now, I just wanted to get everything put back away so that I can continue on decluttering. So all I'm doing right now is just decluttering everything, going through and deciding which items I want to keep and which items I need to get rid of. And then next week, as I said, I will just be going back in and kind of finding out which organization solutions are going to work best for my kitchen at this point and the items that I have left because I do want everything that we have to have a space and a home and I want it to make sense and just make it easy to get to. So that will be my goal next week. So I'm not showing this throughout the whole video, but you can just see here, after I get done organizing and decluttering each cabinet and drawer, I just take everything off our countertop and I move it over to our table. And our dining room table is just going to house all of the things that I need to get rid of and I need to donate and sell. So I will be showing you at the end everything that we got rid of, but it was a lot. Our entire dining room table was so full of all of these items. And I have to tell you, it just feels so, so good. Next, I'm just moving into our cutting board and our measuring spoon drawer. And as you can see, this drawer ends up accumulating a lot of extra things. I don't really know how it happens, but I feel like the system that I had in this drawer is just not working or almost the lack thereof that I had for an organizing system in here. So that's going to be one thing that I'm really going to be tackling next week again. I'm so excited to only be keeping the items that I will use regularly. And then later on, I can go back and make all the items that I am keeping more organized and easier to grab. Last night we fought down at the club But yet you're here in my arms They're calling us crazy I know that it's crazy Not logical Against all odds I call it love I call it love Look at all this stuff. All these items were either not supposed to be in the drawer or they were just items that had kind of gotten stuck there and I'm never going to use. It just feels so good to get all this extra stuff out of the drawers. This drawer is another one. It's kind of like my disposable items that I have. I usually do like to use a lot of reusable items when I can, but sometimes I still do use some clean wrap or some aluminum foil or even some baggies depending on what we are using them for. So although my ultimate goal would be to completely be reusable and everything, this is something that I have and I need this space to be organized because as you can see, it can just get so out of control so quickly.
This next drawer has everything that I use for Kyle's lunches and especially Luke's lunches, but honestly, I feel like I only use a few of these items and a lot of them just end up sitting there and being stored and organized, but I just don't need this much, which is kind of what I'm finding out in almost every single one of my spaces in my kitchen, is even if some spaces are organized, they are so overly crowded and so overly cluttered that the organization doesn't even look nice. It doesn't feel calming when you see it. And that's the feeling that I really wanted to go for in my kitchen was anytime I open up a drawer or anytime I open up a cabinet, I just feel calm and peaceful seeing only the items that I really need and only items that I really want and use. So although I did declutter a good bit in this drawer and throughout my whole kitchen, I feel like I'm actually going to end up going back through everything one more time and just being really, really hard on myself. Do I really need this item? Is it really bringing me that much benefit? Could I do without it? And getting rid of even more. I would love to get rid of even maybe like 25% more of our items because I think that sometimes it's so overwhelming to get rid of so much that even if you have to go back a few different times, it's okay, you can just get rid of as much as you can the first time and then take a few days and then just kind of go back in quickly. I don't feel like you have to pull everything out the second time, but you can just go back into certain drawers and certain areas that you feel really aren't exactly what you need and you can just pull any little items out because even if it's just a few things, it actually does make a difference. So that's definitely something that I'm going to be doing as well. So next week when I share my kitchen organizing and clean with me video, I will be sharing where I got all of these bins, but I did want to say something really quick about these little rose gold wire baskets. I got a lot of questions about them whenever I cleaned out my fridge and my last cook and clean with me. And these ones are actually just from Walmart. They are really inexpensive and I believe they have them online as well. And they do have them in a few different sizes. So if you are interested in these, definitely check out your local Walmart or check them out online because they are really, really pretty and really convenient. So after we had gone through about half the kitchen, this is all the stuff that I'm getting rid of so far. And it felt so good to see all those extra items over there that we were getting rid of that wouldn't be in our space anymore that I knew that we didn't need. I do really love putting all of your decluttering items in one space, kind of spread out so you can really see everything. I feel like that is something that actually kind of motivates you to continue on because as I was decluttering and I saw, oh my gosh, that pile is getting so huge. I'm getting rid of so many things. It really just motivated me to keep going and just be really, really picky on what items I was keeping. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any tips for decluttering. I am always ears to hear any tips that you guys have. You guys have shared so many amazing things with me. So definitely don't stop now. Leave me a comment below if you guys have anything to share. So our silverware drawer actually wasn't too terrible. I feel like that's one that I had worked on before several months ago and that one kind of stayed good for me. But this drawer is a different story. This is just our utensil drawer and I feel like I do have a lot of utensils and I feel like I do cook with a lot of them. So that one's kind of a hard one for me to actually declutter crazy because I do cook a lot and I cook a lot of different things but there were some doubles of things and there were some items that I really just never used or that I could use another item for that purpose. So I was able to get rid of a few things in this drawer and I think my biggest thing with this drawer that will help me is actually just to organize it and get everything in a space and make it look and feel a lot less overwhelming.
So this is my pots and pans drawer and I really didn't want to pull everything out because I know that I only have the pots and pans that I use. It is from a set that I got several years ago and we just love this set so much. I will link it down below because anytime I share cook with me videos, I always get a bunch of questions on what style pots and pans we have. So as I said, I will leave them linked down below in my Amazon favorites but I just ended up not pulling everything out of that drawer just because I knew I was going to be keeping all of my pots and pans this time. Not the wealthiest, but all I make, I make it all this better on you. Now be a day. The next drawer that I decluttered was my Tupperware drawer. I use a lot of Tupperware because I do send leftovers with Kyle to work and we also have a lot of leftovers all the time. So I did keep a lot of them, but I also was able to get rid of a few items. And one thing that I did this time, because honestly, the thing that drives me so nuts about Tupperware drawers and Tupperware cabinets is the lids. I feel like you always have lids everywhere. They are just falling all over the place. It's hard to find a match when you need one. So the thing that I decided to do with this, it does take up a little bit more space, but if you do have the space, I recommend actually putting the lids on the Tupperware and then you just always have a match. If you don't have a match, then you can go ahead and get rid of those items. But I felt a lot more at peace with this and it's just easier to grab them when you need them. It's easier to put them away. And then also I feel like because it does take up some more space, you aren't gonna get so crazily overwhelmed with so much Tupperware because you only have so much space when you can't pack them inside of one another. So that is a big tip that I have if you are struggling with Tupperware. I feel like that has just made so much difference even just within the last week. Moving into this cabinet below our junk drawers is where we kind of keep some of our baking dishes and also our water bottles and our lunch boxes and then a few of these extra little appliances. So although I do bake a lot and I do cook a lot, I kind of feel like I use that as an excuse to keep a bunch of extra stuff sometimes, but really I don't end up using all of these things and I don't use them all all the time for sure. So if there's an item that I don't use all the time, or I have something else that kind of double as that use, then I will go ahead and get rid of that. Like for example, I had several baking dishes and I didn't need all of them. So I got rid of a few extras and I only kept my very favorites that made me feel happy. Moving into the lunch boxes, I am such a sucker for things that are really cute. Honestly, a lot of these brought me happiness. I feel like a lot of these thermals are just such cute designs, but what I would do is I would just hold up each item and feel which one really brought me joy and which one didn't. And I knew that I really only needed one of each. And so what I did is I would just hold them up next to each other and see which one made me the happiest. And it sounds kind of silly, but it really works you guys. So if you are struggling with knowing that you don't need certain things, that you don't use them all the time, but you don't want to get rid of stuff, kind of compare them to to each other and just make yourself choose your favorites because if you're not using them all the time then they are really only costing you the next drawer that I went through was just the one that was under our stove so we just have several cooking and baking dishes down in here and one quick tip that I found as I was organizing the space is if you have cooling racks is go ahead and set one of them up in your cabinet or your drawer 
and you can actually slide some things under them and it makes it so easy to store them and you can just really maximize your space this way. So this was something that I had never done before but I was just trying to figure out how to fit everything in here and I just wanted to bring a little attention to it because it just made me really happy to find a better way to store these. This was the last space that I needed to do and this was a space that I was really dreading. These are our two junk drawers. That's right, we have two of them. I don't really know why we have two junk drawers. When junk drawers are actually being used properly and they are organized properly, it's great and I feel like they can bring a lot of benefit just keeping things close for you and making things nice and easy to grab. But as everyone knows, I'm sure junk drawers just get so unorganized. So I'm really going to be finding a great system next week when I work on this to go ahead and organize this in a way that can kind of stay organized. And I also only wanna keep items in here that really belong in here that we use all the time. So as you will see, Kyle actually has a ton of his tools in here. I feel like we're always doing things to the house and I'm always having him fix things around the house for me, but a lot of times the tools just end up getting left in here. So I knew that the first thing I needed to do was to get all of his tools out of the junk drawer and back into the garage where they belonged. And I might end up actually putting a little bin down in the cabinet below this so that when his tools get brought in here, I can just put them down in that cabinet and wait for him to put those away every so often. And that way it won't be taking up our junk drawer. I found that if you have a problem like this where tools are just always getting left inside, for example, and you obviously don't want it to stay that way, but it just keeps staying that way, it's kind of better to try and find a way to embrace it. So instead of just saying, that's it, tools are never gonna be in here anymore, and you just feel like that is just not very realistic because you know yourself or you know your family too well, go ahead and try and find a solution to that problem other than just saying that problem is not gonna be a problem anymore. And I hope that makes sense to you guys, but that's just something that I've found works in my life. I've done that before in different areas of my home. Like for example, I always want my kids' toys to stay up in the playroom, but I know that that's just not realistic. They are so young and they love having their toys in the living room. So instead of just saying that problem is not gonna be a problem for us anymore, we have a toy bin that stays downstairs and that way it just makes that problem a little bit easier to handle. So definitely try that out if you are finding that you have an issue that just cannot seem to be taken care of. Go ahead and try and embrace that issue and find a solution that makes that problem a little bit easier to handle. So here I'm just going to be showing you how everything turned out, how all the cabinets turned out so far and how they look once they are decluttered. And then if there is a drastic difference, I'm gonna show you a few before pictures because if you guys are like me, you love seeing the quick before and afters. Those are just so satisfying to see the difference. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some cleaning and decluttering motivation. As I said, this is going to be a whole series and I think I'm going to be doing like every other week will be a decluttering video and then on the off weeks will be just a regular cleaning video so you guys will still be getting the best of both worlds. And don't forget, if you guys have any suggestions on what to declutter next, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and also be sure to share this video if it inspired you or gave you motivation. I would so appreciate that. I love you guys so much. Do not forget to subscribe down below if you are not already and also head over to Instagram and follow me over there. And I will see you guys in my next one. If I got superpowers